comrade general, a Major D'Arlet Sale has taken hold on Balakhy, and driven the citizens from the city. Our American friends have agreed to help us in our quest to rid the world of the D'Arlet, destroy the city, and crush the D'Arlet like insects. American bomber, we have you on radar. Proceed to target. China Command out. Roger, China Command. This is Bravo 19er Heavy. Attack vector plotted and laid in. Target on radar. China Command, permission to proceed with attack run. American bomber, proceed to target. China Command out. Roger, China Command. Bravo 19er beginning our run. Cover your ears, boys. It's gonna get loud down there. China has been generous. Check with they the airfield. The me. U.S. has granted us use of their heavy bombers. Use them to drive the GLA I from their hiding China. spots before you send in your troops. General, the GLA is entrenched in the city. It's up to hmm. us to Let's route them out. Look. Destroy all their bases. It's time we corrected our mistake. Kill them all. That's a good choice. We will live in prosperity. Oh, welcome back, General. That's a good start. Don't get used to this too often. Having two factions work together in such a video game with all the powers that we can see is not something you should get used to. Thinking about it, I'm not quite sure why I didn't bother with um, uh, the cash stealing thing. General, there are. I think I just wanted to save the last point to demo other stuff, but it never really came about. China is under attack! It's a little unfortunate that they either couldn't or didn't figure out how to do it for um, for generals. The fact that you have to uh, select a building in order to use its power kind of sucks, to be honest. Um, this becomes more of a problem the later you get into campaigns, because more technology unlocks, which means you have more special abilities, and you can't really take full advantage without having to sort of micromanage all of those um, all of those things the southwest that we should capture it will look real nice when it's done troop crawler signing in the new building that i'm erecting that we haven't really seen before is the propaganda center essentially think of it as your technology unlocking building you want cool stuff Build the propaganda center first. Mm, nice location. China is under attack! I don't really bother with nationalism in general, but also not much in this game. It kind of feel like it's just not that great. Um, you have to... Obviously, it only applies for your infantry, rocket soldiers, and battle masters, the only units that really get the bonus, um, the horde bonus. Which, man, thinking back on that horde bonus, that kind of. If we can destroy one of those GLA camps, kind of a terrible name. Um, the reason I don't really bother with it is just because, since it only really affects those three units, I don't really build those units. One, because. I don't know, I, I'm not too particular about using them in this mission. Um, it's a city mission, so infantry are kind of going to get caught out and um, just get damaged really easily. Or die really easily, I should say. And then there's just the fact that, like, rocket soldiers are too slow and battle masters, well, they're, they're... If I can get an overlord tank for the price of, I don't know, three battle masters i'll take the overlord it may not seem like a really good idea it might not actually be but i'll still take the overlord
And because this is the level where we finally get to actually build Overlord tanks, you can probably guess why I'm why or how I'm gonna go hog wild with them. My admittedly favorite strategy with Overlord tanks is typically building about five of them at the very least, and then just having them in a sort of standard format. Three of them will have uh, Gatling turrets, and two of them will have Propaganda Towers. Propaganda Towers heal units, and we'll also have a, a nice secondary effect that we'll actually get to see this level. Um, and, well, the Gatling turrets just take out uh, anything that is soft skin, so infantry or light vehicles, just that much quicker, as well as being a deterrent against any uh, air units. Not that the GLA have any, but, you know, it's still nice. Also, again, really, if you if you have access to hackers and you can put them in a place that's safe and secure, do that. Make that. Make them a bunch. And, and just uh, all of them. If I wanted to take an hour on this mission, I probably would, just so that I could have like 50 hackers and they'd all be at you know max level, so that I could simply build Overlord tanks, like all of them, ever, and just flood the map with Overlord tanks. Not that you really need to flood the map, because, well, just unlike uh, on a, if you were on a non-brutal difficulty, that wouldn't be the case. It's they're really tough and really hard to uh, defeat. But I'm brutal. Well, the AI sometimes gets uh, some good anti-vehicle uh, strategies going. Or just, you know, the fact that anti-vehicle units shoot faster and do just are painful to have to deal with. Are you ready? Overlord it is waiting. Time. This is the Overlord tank. I hope I'm not alone as well as being someone who constantly quoted the Overlord tank. It's ready. I am the. You know, everybody else on the on the Chinese side of things uh, in this game, that is, just stereotypical voice lines. You know, um, it's just I don't really like the portrayal. The only unit that really goes against that is the Overlord tank. Maybe that's what makes it cool or cooler than everything else on the roster. Maybe they just realized that the Overlord tank needed to sound unit not stereotypical. I don't know. What do you need? Suffice to say that he's waiting. I don't really know if there's a unit that's portrayed the Mammoth Tank in a better way. General. Ever. Which, frankly, for this game of all games in the Command & Conquer franchise, I think that's saying something. And remember when I was talking about Propaganda Towers having that sort of secret effect? Unit lost. The fact that they reveal hidden units is really, really strong. I will crush. I will. You won't really see it in the campaign, or at least not the default Chinese campaign. But it is definitely something that, uh, in later levels or in Zero Hour, for example, is something you will you will want to invest in. The propaganda tower that just sort of exists on the outskirts of your base. They're vulnerable, they don't cost all that much, I believe they do drain power. They're a little useful if you have units around, but really the main reason why you want them is the stealth detection. I believe there's one other reason to have them around, um, but we won't see that. Nothing for like the entire original game, I believe. So look forward to uh, the day that I finally remember to mention it. Potentially. 
If you're ever curious as to why I feel like this is a map specifically designed for Overlord tanks, just building a hell of a, a hell of a lot of them, and just kind of going hog wild, is simply because you have so much of a distance to cover. It's all urban combat, or at least almost all of it is urban combat. You're going to be going very slowly. This works to the Overlord's advantage because it can't go fast, and secondly because the fact that you can just build a bunch of propaganda towers on them means that you don't need to rely on them gaining veterancy, which is going to be tough when you have 60 of them. But you can just kind of roll around with them uh, and they just heal themselves constantly. What do you need? This is large. Thinking back on it, I think I think there's actually a steady spawn for the carpet bomber, which, I mean, is nice. I'm glad that that's the thing that they uh, sort of changed slash fixed from A10s of days gone by. What? It is. It's also kind of nice to see that buildings actually. Uh, like, there's an actual line of sight effect from them, and you can sort of eliminate that problem. Extra large. Nothing in our way. There's still a little bit of a disconnect as to how a building looks, even when destroyed, versus where units can see or shoot, even when, you know, destroyed. But. You know, take it where you can get it, I guess. General, there are two targets remaining. It won't be long. I guess to specify or to sort of expand on the booby traps in the ground, they act as a sort of perimeter detection slash explosive. So, uh, if you happen to get close to one without detecting it and destroying it in time. It simply blows up in your face and does a surprisingly good job at it. The fact that they're bunched up so much as well is really dangerous just because they will absolutely kill anything that rolls past them. Crush. This is the Overlord tank. Eliminator. I will crush. I will take care of it. It's also a little bit more important, um, although probably not mentioned enough, that while we saw it in the training mission, the towers that can fall over and crush things, that's like a very regular thing in some maps. Just the way that the, the designers place the towers and such, you really want to be careful when you're using units like an overlord tank or anything that's really high cost. It would be a shame to lose a tank that's worth $2,000 uh, simply because you had it drive in the wrong direction or couldn't drive it in the right direction uh, for the second or two that really counts. Despite all the good things I have to say about Overlord tanks, they sadly aren't indestructible. It won't be long. So you still kind of need to pay attention to you where you're going and what you're attacking. For example, I'm kind of doing the wrong thing here. I use the artillery on the uh, GLA Black Market, essentially their equivalent of the propaganda center mixed in with hackers. What do you need? And well, I guess technically it's more the palace. Anyways, whatever. The point is, is that using the artillery on that building instead of the bunker, or like the D-Day defensive bunker there, it's not a really good idea. I should have used it on the defensive structure instead. 
extra large. It's probably also a good idea to just destroy this tower just so that in the event that anything happens, it doesn't come crashing down and take out one, two, or even three potential uh, Overlord tanks, depending on how it falls. Unit lost. And because I didn't focus artillery or put artillery down on uh, the defensive bunkers, it means that everybody in that bunker is slowly but surely gaining experience for all of the single uh, Overlord tanks that are coming out one at a time. What do you need? Overlord is waiting. I am in control. You I will. For the honor of China! Unit lost. And sometimes there's just a little bit too much to shoot at. I mean, I think we can see that at least one of the units, probably every unit in there, was level 3. Ready for Unit order. But, well, Standing thanks to having, like, 50 hackers and all being at max veterancy, you kind of don't ever have to worry about the the waltz of the Overlord ending. China will the what do you mean? I forget if the Propaganda Center actually is, like, supposed to play music, or if that's just a Carpet bomber something I was remembering a long time ago. Or misremembering from a long time ago. Yes, yes. Unit lost. Rush. We are the Red God. Yes. Standing attention. It is time. Extra large. I am in control. Fight them. Drive them out. Ready. Overlord is waiting. Overlord moving. Extra large. Speaker tower will be I ready. Crush. This is the Overlord tank. It is time. Speaker tower is ready. Overlord is waiting. Oh yeah, building multiple upgrades kind of just uh, piles on the one audio file over and over onto itself. I see. I've never seen this happen as well. Somehow the carpet bomber turned around and then just flew off the map in the wrong direction. Overlord is I'm not sure if it's because I used it too close to the top of the map, so it came back. I don't know. There's something there. What do you need? Defenders of peace. Overlord is waiting. Extra large. Overlord is waiting. They are pure. We are victorious. Extra large. What do you need? 